Hey, all you happy lost souls. Um, we went out on a little, uh, you know, artifact finding adventure. We got the stuff washing off in the, uh, the cleaner there just so we can get all the bacteria and potential parasites from raccoons and whatever else are on the banks of the penny pack. But, um, and, uh, yeah, so, like, um, I really appreciate all those who reach out and uh, who have joined the channel recently, who are into finding artifacts, who are into unraveling the mystery of ancient North America and, you know, breaking this Clovis first paradigm, which has totally halted the progression and the understanding of, you know, ancient mankind in in the Americas and, and that story and how that story is missing from the overall picture of humanity. And um, without that piece, your minds will just break everything apart and rewrite it. Um, <laughs> what if ancient humanity came from the Americas and then was destroyed by that comet 13,000 years? But like uh, the Mesopotamian culture, for instance, um, Clementiform language, the the writing, um, no one knows where it comes from to this day, and then yet in, you know, the west coast of South America, down through Chile, um, through the Andes, they find these elongated skulls, and they find um, artifacts that have ancient Samaria uh, writing in them, and of course you could trace this all the way back to the ancient and extremely suppressed um, site in the Grand Canyon, um, which apparently contained tons of Egyptian and ancient Indian from India, um, like Buddha, you know, type artifacts. Um, to this day, the area is still protected um, by the military and um, Smithsonian apparently emptied out this vault and, and then closed it down. Um, well, a lot of that could be conspiracy or conjecture. I still see a lot of trolls posting that, you know, I'm spreading misinformation and that, like, you know, none of this stuff is actually uh, artifacts. It's all naturally occurring. For the people that have that opinion, you obviously really need to see an ophthalmologist. You need to have your eyes checked. And if you are in archaeology, that's, that's exactly what I mean. You're just one of the people protecting the paradigm, a paradigm police officer, essentially. Or just a troll, or it's just YouTube trying to create conflict to promote an algorithm. I have no clue, but um, I just am never going to respond to those. You, you can have your opinion, you're entitled to it, but to say something like this, this is a naturally occurring stone, like this had no efficacy, there's no design or shape. You could see the undercoloring under the pitch and all the patina. There's still pitch on that, you know, this, this tar like substance. Um, clinging to some of these rocks that were composite tools. Um, and this is a non-composite tool. This is something like a, a gouge or a pressure, you know, pressure flaking tool to, to create really sharp edges. Um, and what I, what I wrote out here, just to stay on track, is a timeline. It's a, it's a theory it, to try to piece all of what you're seeing together. Now, I am in the southeastern part of Pennsylvania. Um, about 16, 17 miles from Center City, Philadelphia. Um, and I live in a very rich, unique geological area. Why here? Why are we finding ancient Salutrian style tools here in this spot? Well, let's look at our timeline. We have year zero, and we'll move back. And at the end, we have year 20,000 BCE, before Common Era, formerly known as A.D., Around 20,000 years ago, 22,000 years ago, because we got to add in the common era time, about 20,000 BCE, 22,000 years ago to about 15,000 BCE, 17,000 years ago is where I find a lot of Salutrian artifact type stuff. The little saws, the sewing instruments, the, the hooks, the intricate um, diamond shaped um, preforms and uh, these thinner agate type tools, tools like this that were obviously used for sewing longer like form needles. Um, here's a prime example of, of something we can clearly we can clearly see here. One that hasn't lost 
and been polished down by the stream. And this is found in situ uh, as a tree came up. But we could see the razor sharp, you see that, that edging, those, that sharp, that razor sharp edge and the point broke off. This is almost like a leaf shape, but it's keeled. Flat on the back and by it's not bifacially flaked. You've got this weird opposite of what you would see on like a Clovis point where this part would be fluted this part is actually elevated so you can use this as a knife on each side um, and it's keel hauled and I believe they had ancient types of pitch and they just split a stick and this is um, an arrow spearhead um, a knife but um, this looks solution this is not a, a design of Clovis uh, you could see that there's percussion left the core and then they went back and with a tool similar to this and a piece of of hide they press down on the edges to create that razor sharp edge and this will still slice you wide open and that's a piece of quartz um, and we have other ones that are this design i have one other one that's intact that's bigger that's black and flint right right here where they leave that core but they percussion out the sides um they were creating all kinds of um we have a lot of people that love to see art and they love to see the animals and they love to see the things um and this portable rock art as, as some would call it and some of it i think is is possibly paradonia other stuff is absolutely they carve things um sitting around a campfire the illusion of the flames lacking up against the, these carved pieces and you can just see the art and the um, intensity in it. You have to have an artist's eye to pick up on it. And um, a lot of people discredit it. What you have here is a piece of something they call Oreo agate. Um, kind of looks like an Oreo with the cream in the middle, right? Now, this was cut out. And it wasn't worked yet. But it was going to be worked. It was quarried. And I believe they were going to create um, a relief or a, a pendant like we have back here. Now, the Salutrian people, the Salutrians loved to, to carve beautiful works of art. Even their utilitarian tools were, were, were designed with beauty, art, intelligence, um, just different, you know. Uh, and we're talking 20,000, you know, BCE to 17,000. And that's where we see stuff like this. At the Salutrian Quarry site, we find these these pendants, and you can clearly see they left that back piece, and they chipped away all the quartz, leaving this elevated form behind here. You got an eye, you got the ear, you got the nose, the trunk, you got the mouth, and you even have a tongue back in there when the light hits it. But we could see that this was clearly chipped out of here, fractured and worked, and turned into this beautiful mammoth head pendant. And that's all you see on the back. Flip it over. And it's almost as if that agate piece that's sticking out of this stamp. It's almost a stamp. You can see where someone put their thumb and just rubbed and just wished just loop now something like this when uh, you you know lick your thumb and, and, and rub this and you can see all the detail coming out in it and then you hold it by a fire and you can see the holes where the trunk you know the snout is and you can see the eye um, just really cool stuff um, and nature doesn't do that so um, we get a lot of pendants. We get like this fox head and this beautiful um, high grade limestone with, with um, gold and stuff running through it. Um, and it's clearly a fox head. And this clearly had a, a hole. You see the hole there and there to loop a piece of sinew through um, to attach this. This is probably worn as a pendant or a necklace. And then what you're seeing um, during this Salutrian period of time is a veneration, a belief system forming where they're leaving a pair of their best artifacts behind. They take a careful time to cover it up and lay them side by side. And then when stuff comes along and uh, strips the uh, that layer off and it leaves the two artifacts behind, you'll see like a matching, matching thing, a matching kilt with 
uh, a planing tool that matches right next to one another. Um, you'll see like a knife and a, a razor. Like, um, hey, I got to get that tray out. But this notion of, of leaving things, this is seen in, in Europe too, in, in ancient creek beds, river beds at crossing sites, at um, maybe even to mark a ceremony out, mark an important place out. Um, and you just get like these beautiful, like, these Jersey courts, these animal profiles left at these important areas. And a lot of the areas kind of where the, the natural springs and the natural water is coming. Right. Yeah.